The start of the new year is always good because we have the opportunity to look at the past, not because we expect it to repeat, but it allows ourselves to put things into perspective. 2019 was the end of the decade. It's interesting to draw a few good things about the last 10 years. Out of them, I think the last 10 years were dominated by central banks' hyperactivism. Depending on which central bank balance sheet you look at, it was multiplied between two and five times. Second and very important for Europe, the European Central Bank managed to bring the cost of funding for all the countries at around the same level. And this is a remarkable achievement. Third and very important for all of us, because when you look back, we always have the sentiment that markets were driven by central banks' actions. Well, it was not the case if you look at the profits. Out of the 162% total return of the MSCI World Index, more than 60% came from earnings. So the corporate sector was fantastic in generating those earnings. And a third of it was coming from dividends. So the same profitability allowed those companies to pay those dividends. So we should remind ourselves that the last 10 years were very profitable for the corporate sector. 2019, of course, was an exceptional year finishing the decade. And there, we have some issues that we have to deal with as we get into 2020. Most of the contribution of last year was coming from a valuation expansion in equity markets, not from earnings, because earnings were at zero in terms of growth. Hence the problem that we have at the start of this year, because valuations are at the highest levels we have seen in the last 15 years. So the starting point of 2020 is not as favorable as what we had at the start of 2019. The second big challenge will be labor costs because part of this high profitability at the corporate sector was due to the fact that labor has no pricing power. With unemployment rate at a very low level in the US, the question remains for 2020 whether the labor costs are going to rise and impact negatively the corporate sector. The third element, which may not be so much for 2020, but probably for the years beyond 2020, is a big amount of debt that we have in the system. Allowing companies to borrow at cheap levels has allowed those companies to issue a huge amount of debt, governments included, and eventually this may be an issue for financial markets if and when interest rates start to move up. But don't want to sound too negative. And we have green shoots in 2020. The first one is the fact that central banks are going to keep rates at a very low level. Hence, the cost of financing for the companies, as we see for now, is going to remain at a low level. Second, and very important for the cycle, China and Europe are starting to see better economic numbers. On the Chinese numbers, we can confirm that the bottom in terms of sequence of growth was at the end of last year, and this will lead us into better economic conditions at the start of 2020. Third and most important, inflation expectations have bottomed out. This is important for consumers, because if you think that goods are going to be more expensive tomorrow, you tend to buy them today but especially for corporates, because what has been lacking so far has been investment. If the price of machines that you want to invest in are going to be more expensive tomorrow, you want them to buy them today. And this may drive more optimism at the investment side of the economy. Last but not least, the political environment remains uncertain. Hence, we have to expect bouts of volatility. But when the price of protecting portfolios is at a cheap level, it makes sense to protect portfolios if anything happens which has been unforeseen, but eventually you want to be protected against those events.